get Tom Price. That's right. Very pleased to see that establishment Republican person no longer be in the Trump administration. Not because of what he did, but because he's an establishment Republican who, in my opinion, he just doesn't match the description of the Trump train. <laughs> and first, let me apologize for my sinusy sound. Um, it is that time of year here in North Dakota. It is getting cold uh, and wet, and every single person at my work is sick with the same thing I'm sick with, uh, a version of the flu. We all get it at different levels. You know that. My wife's had it for a week, but as I say, everybody at work, that's a good dozen and a half, maybe a touch more than that. And they know everyone else is sick as well. So this is going around. I believe we got it because the kids are back in school and the little germ incubators that our public school systems are, it's guaranteed that if we don't have a rock solid golden seal um, immune system, we're going to sound like I do for a little while each year, maybe twice. That's okay. Thanks for sticking with me. Welcome to BS with AJ. That's right. BS with AJ here on the Talk America Radio Network. I'm excited tonight because I get the final word on this NFL controversy, this NFL stuff, as I like to say. Why do I get the final word? Because everybody has already sounded off about it, including myself. Last, It's been a week since I've, you know, the last time I did the show, I'm doing the show tonight. I do it on a Friday night after work. And last week, Friday night, was the night that President Trump, or the night after President Trump had made his comments about getting that those SOBs out of there or off the field for not standing for the anthem. What he would do if he were an NFL owner. Uh, I spoke about it a little bit that night, but of course that has erupted. It's been a massive story, all kinds of things going on. You've been listening to it. I've been listening to it. I'm not going to repeat what everybody else has said already. I know that you've heard it. Um, I bet if you're listening to this show and you're listening to this network, um, you have heard it. But I'm going to give you the last word on it. I think that we've had an interesting discussion. It's been very important what's come out about how important it is, the anthem, the flag, why we do it, who it's honoring. That, that discussion's been there a little bit, but I don't think that most folks rhetorically have taken it where I'm going to take it, and I hope you'll stay tuned for that. That is coming up. I wanted to comment, again, if you're someone who listens to this show or listens to this network, I'm sure that you caught the Rush Limbaugh interview with Sean Hannity uh, two nights this past week. Tonight was the last night of that. I didn't get to see all of both. I saw some of both, I guess would be the best way to put that. But if you're like me, you love seeing Rush do TV. And I know that was part of the discussion at the end of the second part of the interview on the, just tonight, on Friday night on Hannity. But, you know, listening to the show scantily, I get maybe 20 minutes a day, something like that, where I get the chance to listen unless I force it. Um, which... I would. I need to do more, but the point being, a lot of his folks have called callers. All of us, those of us who are fans and take in what it is Rush offers us daily on his radio show, we want to see more of it. We want more. Everybody does. He does a phenomenal job of offering that in other ways, other than TV. He's aware of that. He reaches the biggest audience of anyone. All of us wish we were Rush, right? <laughs> we can't but be honest about that. Uh, maybe nowadays, and I wanted, this is an aside, I'll get back to what he said and specifically what I want to talk about this interview, but these days, doing television shows is much easier than it was when he did his first show back in the 90s, the early 90s, around the time I graduated high school. Not a lot of digital stuff happening yet, at least not now where it's 100% digital. <laughs> if you go and, you know, there's reel-to-reel -reel, uh, machines collecting dust in all of these production rooms and engineering rooms and all of that kind of stuff. They're there, but we're not using them. And you can toss together a television show, or at least these professionals at these networks can, very quickly. So I think Rush would have a different experience. But to what he said that caught my ear and really um, stuck out with me was a comment that he made about, he was reassuring us. He said, don't forget, folks, Trump runs the DOJ. We should all feel okay. Let's not be too worried about it. He's in charge. Let's see how this plays out. Something along those lines. I'm paraphrasing. But it really caught my attention because he's exactly right. But my next thought was, well, what does it look like, him being able to nip this kind of nonsense in the bud? How would he go about uh, selling that to all of us? What would be the, the delivery and the speech? What would be the wording? And I came up with what I thought was an interesting way of presenting I want to call it an analogy. I might be incorrect in my verbiage. <laughs> but what if our president came out and, and talked to us, the American people, and said, folks, imagine this. 
you live in your apartment or your, your townhouse or whatever it is, and you have a housing committee, those awful, awful things, dastardly things that tell you what you can and can't do with your property. Anyway, you have a housing committee, and they come to you and they say, we think there's something wrong with your air conditioning in your uh, unit. We're going to have to take a look at it. And you say, well, gosh, that sounds perfectly reasonable, because if there is something wrong with that unit, I, I want to get it fixed, right? Of course. And so they say, well, let's do this. Let's hire someone to come in that specializes in, in, um, in home heating and cooling. And let's give them a, let's just let them do whatever they need to do. We'll figure out cost stuff later. Um, you know, there's gonna, it's going to be cool, but let's just get into it. And so the inspector, the, the um, heating and cooling specialist, the investigator comes to investigate the air conditioning. And he can't, you know, it seems to be working. You know, the, 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 the unit gets hot or cold, as it should be, depending on the directions given to it through the device on the wall. But it's, it sounds a little weird. And maybe there's a little bit of a knock or a rattle, you know, around in one of the uptake systems there or one of the vents coming out. Or maybe he's put a, a, a meter on it and, and there's a little bit more electricity being used than he's used to. And it just doesn't make sense because as, a, as an experienced investigator, he came in and he thought he knew right away what he needed to know to fix it. And then as he took a look, he's not finding anything to, to fix. And so he decides, well, I'm going to bring in another technician, somebody else. Um, who also lives in the building and is on the housing committee and believes that this, this air conditioner is broken, and we're going to look for the problem together. And, and to speed up this analogy, you end up with five or six heating and cooling technicians inspecting a unit that it, all the while is working, heating and cooling the home to the temperature desired. Maybe it's using a little more power than you'd like. Maybe it takes a little longer to get the room to temp whenever you, you, you get it going or whatever, the, whatever that little minutia might be. But it's working. And so, as the tenant, the person who feels that they're going to be on the hook for the bill of all of these people finding nothing while the unit continues to work and they brush over it with um, toothbrushes and magnifying glasses, spending, 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 believing there's a problem and never finding one, at what point as a tenant of that unit, regardless of what the house commi housing committee says and regardless of the presence of the technicians on your property, at what point do you say, no more? My unit is working. My home is being heating and cooled, heated and cooled. I want you to stop. If I have a problem, I will call. In the meantime, I have to get back to doing things other than worrying about my freaking heating and cooling unit. Now we understand how Trump can talk to the American people and us and explain this issue with Mueller, Mueller, <laughs> and how he can go about separating Mueller, Mueller, and his team from the millions of dollars that they're spending, uh, from all of the information that they're gathering and uncovering that they have no right to even be looking at. Remember, there was no crime here before they were ever uh, appointed or hired. Uh, there's all kinds of conflict of interest, and it's basically a lot of Democrat donors. And, and so, again, with the analogy, what you have are a lot of technicians. It's the same with climate change, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's the same. It's a lot of people who believe there's a problem before they've looked. It's a very important difference because if you're, if you're not sure that there's a problem and you're only looking to see if there is one, I think you have a completely different approach. You ask different questions and you use different methods. When you believe that you know what the problem is before you go and look for it, you change your tactics and strategy. You overlook things and skip steps and processes, processes, to get to that specific issue that you believe you have already guessed. It's very similar. It's like I say, the experienced heating and cooling guy coming to look at the HVAC unit. He hears something and he believes he's diagnosed the problem and then finds that he's incorrect and is confused and continues to try to justify his initial suspicion. Well, that is what has gone on with this whole mueller muller Mueller investigation. We're tired of it. We want to save the taxpayer dollars. We would like to move forward. That's another aspect of what Rush says every week, and Hannity you know, touched on that in the interview, and it's something that all of us should, should absol absolutely lift from Rush and borrow and use and pay forward. And that is, if for just three months, our Congress, our Republican Congress, that we, the people, gave them, and the Republican White House that we, the people, gave them, gave them, 
all of them, worked together for three months to pass the agendas that they ran on, the agenda that Trump ran on. Just three months. Peachy, peachy keen. It's as simple as that. We need to pay that forward. We need to recognize that the, the folks like Rush, he really does have an ability to see things from angles that others don't and explain them concisely and clearly and briefly. Uh, brevity, the soul of wit. Uh, Rush, one of the wittiest talk show hosts that exists, in my opinion, in the medium. Um, but anyway, uh, we need to pay forward and pay attention and, and, you know, let's reach out to Rush. Let's send him emails. Rush at EIB dot com net. <laughs> you guys know the, the email address. We listen. We can do it during a show. Let's get him on the air. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more BS with AJ right after this. It's the Talk America Radio Network. Are you tired of paying high prices for TV channels you don't watch? Of course you are. You want to watch and pay for the channels you like. Now you can take back control of your TV with Dish's Flex Pack. Get over 50 of America's favorite channels for just $39.99 per month and then add the channel packs that you want. And your TV price won't go up for two years, guaranteed. Plus, when you call today, you'll get free standard installation in up to six rooms and a free HD DVR upgrade. Need more channels? Dish offers loaded channel lineups from $54.99 per month, featuring over 190 channels, and HBO is included for a full year. And for a limited time, GoDish will give you a $100 prepaid Visa card when you sign up and mention offer code GIFT100. Call now, 800-795-5573, 800-795-5573, Packages, prices, and promotions subject to change. Gift card courtesy of GoDish.com. Call for details. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to BS with AJ on the Talk America Radio Network. I am AJ. Thank you for tuning in. I stepped away after the last segment to grab uh, something from the house, and I, and I saw my dog laying on the bed. I mentioned that we're sick. The dog is sick as well. The dog has the flu. He's thrown up twice since I've gotten home from work in a span of about an hour and a half, and he's sleeping oddly and, and kind of doing the shivering and the whining during his sleep. It's crazy when you come across a flu bug like this that even will infect your pets, but we're in that kind of situation. I, he's, you know, he'll be fine. We'll all be fine, but crazy stuff. I like the air conditioning uh, analogy for how Trump can approach and think about cutting off and shutting down a Mueller investigation after a certain period of time. It's obviously the, the real world compared to an analogy, but it's a great one. I hope that you caught that. You, and you can apply it to anything. It can be a car. You know, uh, you can, you've figured out already how to transition that to something that someone else can identify with. There may be some folks out there who... HVAC? Heating and cooling? <laughs> I doubt it. You know what I'm saying. But yeah, you know, after a while, when you don't find anything, when there isn't any evidence of an issue, where, where is the line? What is the line where it's acceptable to say, okay, no more, even if you're the subject of, of the inquiry? In America, being American, being brave, free, pursuing our happiness, a lot of us in our own lives, we say enough about things all, all the time in our lives. It happens enough. Sometimes we say it to our children. Sometimes we say it to ourselves. Sometimes it's a coworker or a friend or a spouse or a family member. I don't want any more. It's, it's okay to do that. We say it to businesses. When, when we have issues with, let's say, a cell phone or some kind of subscription service, we say enough, no more. These are common, common things. The left, the media, will always be hysterical and overreactionary, overreactive, to every utterance from our president or, you know, from a conservative, for, from a Republican, especially from a conservative talk show host, uh, any popular ones. But it's, it, it, it is what it is. At some point, there has been enough. We've heard that red line phrase used in foreign policy a lot, but it, 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 uh, it applies on the micro as well as the macro. I said before, I get to have the final word on the NFL stuff, controversy. That's the term Fox News was using, controversy. I like stuff because there's so much stupidity in it. Like I say, if you guys listen to this show, to this network, you've heard what people have been saying about it all week. I don't need to repeat it, so that's why I use the term stuff and, and know that you get it. But for me, what hasn't been said, what hasn't been said, people have talked about the debate about 
race. They've talked about the cops aspect, the protest, or, you know, the things that Colin Kaepernick has said and, and whoever the other athletes are and whatever the sports have been, have said in support of him or come out in support of him for saying those things. That's all been discussed, but my question is, and what's finally gone through my head as we got through this, and, you know, I guess Thursday night football, everybody stood. So I'm thinking they're going to get their act together and start standing. That's why this is the final word. But it's not about you, Colin. It's not about you, Ravens, when you're in Great Britain. It's not about you, guy who is stretching. and Or, you know, somebody said he, like, he was acting like a dog peeing. Whatever it was that actually happened, it's not about those people. It's not about those individuals. What happens on Sunday, on game day, is that very lucky few individuals get to put on a uniform and go represent a city for thousands upon thousands of screaming fans shelling out the dollars to come and separate themselves from this antagonistic real-world work-life 40 hours, grind it out, pound the freaking pavement life. We don't go to watch parties for our teams to debate about freaking Trump. Liberals do, not Americans. It's, this is just absolutely crazy to me. It's gone so far overboard. It's not about, it's not even about that specific game. It's about the game of football. It's about the gathering together. It's about the ability to freaking do it in the first place. We used to have an understanding of what it meant to enjoy the kinds of entertainments and comforts and um, extravagances that we enjoy. They are extravagant. We live extravagantly in this nation. The poorest amongst us live extravagantly. The poorest amongst us will watch an NFL game every Sunday, every season, their whole life. <laughs> Is that not incredible? No, they're oppressed, AJ. It's just not fair. This country sucks. Take a knee, bruh. This is just insane. It's not about you, player. It's not about you, team. It's about the tradition. It's about the role you're playing in the history, in the bigger scheme. To me, that's what hockey players get. And yeah, I'm going to be lame and go off on a little tangent about hockey here, but hockey players get it. And I think, it, I think there's a fundamental difference between the players that you find in the National Hockey League and the farm leagues below them. And, and the major juniors, blah, 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 compared to the NFL and what we do in our collegiate system and our high school system here in the U.S. What you have with hockey is a network of homes and families that foster hockey players that get to travel and play for clubs that aren't in their hometown. Players like Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin, and well, Malkin's different because he's Russian, but it, it probably happens over there as well. Everybody's modeled it after this Canadian model. And the Canadian model, in my view, and I could be wrong or I'll leave something out, I hope you correct me because this is one of my favorite subjects, but it's a network of families with other children and other hockey players involved in the hockey programs. And so these kids who are discovered at very young ages, sometimes like Crosby, eight, nine years old, uh, Gretzky, th that young, they live this life of peace and community and family and support and instruction and uh, ethics, manners. It's like, and don't get me wrong, it's not 100% of hockey players, but you look at the difference, I think, between the NHL and the NFL, I think you'll be shocked. You hear about a DUI, you hear about something every once in a while in hockey, and, and uh, um, Patrick Kane, that kind of thing. Some, you know, Jonathan Taves, I think some cab driver thing or something like that, occasionally. But you see these guys, uh, they get a knot jerked in their tail, and they straighten out most of the time. And it's, it's a very small percentage that don't. And those who don't and never do eventually find themselves not playing in the NHL. It's a real thing. If you're an NHL fan, you've witnessed it, as I have. I wish I could remember the player's name. Now, he dated an actress, and he was just a dirty player. Well, he doesn't play anymore. He, I, I believe that he lost years on his, from his career in the NHL because of his behavior and the way that he conducted himself on the ice during the game. And so to, to bring this digression back around, we live extravagantly. There are athletes who play at a very high professional level who recognize how lucky they are and fortunate they are, and they work their tails off to be the best that they can be. And if you're a Pittsburgh Penguins fan like myself, you're lucky 
because you have a Sidney Crosby, a generational player leading your team. Now back-to-back -back championships, and who knows what happens this year. Third championship in his career. He's only like 30, 29, 30 years old. He was born in 87. I should do that math real quick. Yeah, he's 30. <laughs> I'm fast. But we have a clear picture now. We've talked about this with our media and our politicians. Let's talk about that. this with our athletes, with those gladiators amongst us who live wonderfully extravagant and luxurious lives. Those that play for the NBA and the NFL and a lot of times the um, MLB, they don't get it anymore. They're spoiled brats, a lot of them. Not all, don't get me wrong. But that they're loud about it, and that, that's who we see. They're the ones who the cameras are on. Those are the three biggest sports in this country. So everybody's watching them. And what we've learned is that they're idiots. They have no clue. Because I believe if they really understood and had been taught history and had a context and had something to um, educate such strong opinions other than the crap that our public schools and our and our liberal institutions have drummed into them, I think that they would be appalled at their own behavior. I really do. I really do. And you know, a quick a quick side note on this. This went through my head the other night as well. I mentioned the term gladiators. These football players and our, our sports types, they're our modern modern gladiators. And there's something very important about our modern version of it. Some guys go out and they, they beat each other up on Sunday or three or four times a week or whatever it might be, depending on the sport. They get paid very well for it. We all get really fired up about it and we, and we smack talk with the, the fans of other teams that we hate and people smack talk at us and when we win, we brag and we've got bragging rights and we play fantasy this and we tweet this and Facebook that. It's an escape. It's our version of, yes that gladiatorial contest, that coliseum. It allows us to vent these kinds of energies of rivalry and conquering and vengeance and, and all of the, the rhetoric, the saber rattling that happens in real life. We get to do it in a perfectly healthy way, safe way, with no danger. No one, no one is being harmed purposefully. It is always a voluntary player being accidentally injured. Most, that's 99.99% that's .99 of the time. Any injury is one that is an accident as a result of the game that they choose freely to play. And the energy that we're using in this, our modern day, in our gladiatorial version of the Coliseum with NFL, NHL, NBA, all of it, is the energy that in previous ages, in previous times, was vented through revolution, conquest, war, and murder, death, kill, ladies and gentlemen, oppression, slavery, all of it. It's, it's that energy. It's, AJ, you're crazy. I hear, I know some people will say that. I don't think so. I think we get to get excited and angry and frustrated and have that roller coaster of emotions in an overtime game that, game that our team loses or wins, or a championship that our team loses or wins. We're not taking any of that energy that we expel. It's, it's therapeutic. We, that's why we talk about it. It's an escape. We allow ourselves to, to vent and to release things, energy. And so when we start to try to politicize it, we're, we're treading on dangerous ground. We will reject it because it is the very energy that keeps us from being that kind of upheaval-loving, uh, cyclical, revolutionary beings, <laughs> if I might go deeply, that our species really can be. Boy, it's a lot of fun to talk about this stuff. That's why I'm, that's why I'm calling it BS with AJ. This is so much fun, just talking about these realities and perspectives that we can get from what we're seeing play out in front of us on our televisions. We're going to talk a touch about, touch more about that right after this. Stay tuned. Go nowhere. This is BS with AJ on the Talk America Radio Network. Do you use the expensive blue or yellow pills to charge your sex life? Are you thinking about it? What if we can promise you the same results for less than $3 a pill? If you're paying $20 a pill for the other pills, you're getting taken to the cleaners. Our pills deliver the exact same results for less than $3. 
you'll save more than $16 a pill for the same results. And right now, radio callers will get 44 blue or yellow pills for $120 with free discreet shipping. You can save more than $700 off pharmacy prices. Charge your sex life now and save a ton of money. Call now and get your 44 pills and save over $700 and qualify for free shipping. Stop overpaying and call right now. 800-296-1289. 800-296-1289. 800-296-1289. 800-296-1289. That's 800-296-1289. The following message is brought to you by Health Markets, your first choice when you need health insurance for your small business. Do you offer health insurance to your employees? Call us now and see if you can save money. Do you want to offer vision and dental to your employees? Call us. Do you think you're paying too much for your current health insurance? Call us. Do you want somebody else to do all the legwork and search thousands of health plans from over 180 health insurance companies nationwide? Call us. We're Health Markets, and thanks to a little-known solution, we could help your business save thousands of dollars on health insurance costs and save your employees money, too. Our service is free. Don't miss the great savings. Call now. 800-472-5145. 800-472-5145. That's 800-472-5145. Health Markets Insurance Agency is DBA of InSphere Insurance Solutions, Inc. Licensed in all states. Product availability varies. Welcome back to BS with AJ. Ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you tuning in. Gladiators, right? The football players, our athletes today. This is what I was talking about in the last segment. I talked about how our modern day gladiators allow us to vent energy. That and back in the day when we didn't have anything but the Coliseum and men and fighting each other and animals and murder, death, kill going on, and when we were doing anything but conquering and enslaving one another. That's, that's that energy that we're letting out as we cheer on our teams to championships or to overtime wins and losses or to losses and wins in general. The fighting back and forth with other fans, it's a blast. We have fun with it these days in a civilized world. In Western civilization, we enjoy sports instead of conquest. That's crazy, AJ. Well, I don't think so. But the, one of the reasons I don't think so, it's one of the differences between me and a Rush, me and a Hannity, me and a Mark Levin. I call myself, I identify <laughs> as, an, as an agnostic, um, agnostic, excuse me. I, I don't claim to have any knowledge of the, of the power that's so much bigger than me. <laughs> I don't assume so much. And I recognize when I say that, that if I were home amongst my family, I would have several who would look askance at me and it'd be like, what you talk about, Willis? Right? Thank you, Gary Coleman, teaching us how to question authority. Um, they would want, what you talking about? What does that mean? All it means is, you've heard me on this show, if you've listened. Uh, I, I do nothing but defend Christianity. I believe it is the basis, the reason we have Western civilization. And we live so extravagantly, as I was talking about before, so luxuriously compared to the rest of the world. It's because of Christianity. It's because of an evolving religion that allows a human being to question, doubt, or deny it without in real time, in life consequences. All the consequences are after you're dead. What other religion gives you that kind of freedom? I don't know it. I guess you could claim Buddhism and all those others, but they didn't give us iPhones, folks. It might sound horrible, but it's just the truth. This planet has advanced because Christianity evolved in, an, in a way that became a, it became a, the foundation of, of a culture and a civilization that resulted in freedom, free will, self-direction, self-responsibility. Uh, because it's up to each of us an indivi- as an individual to either accept God or not, accept Jesus or not, at least in the way that it's presented to us by our forebears, the people, those who have come before us, right? The Bible has laid it down for us. I can tell you flat out, I believe that my, my grandfather believes that the Bible is pretty much just a, an, an account <laughs> um, written down of what took place. Uh, verbatim black and white it all happened everything is absolutely true it was it's it's a textbook on the creation of earth and man 
I think that that's too much for me. I can't do that because I am such a believer in science. I am such a science buff. And I've talked about before the relationship between science and religion. I've did, done a little bit of, well, did a blog on it, blah, blah, blah. But the point of it all is that whether you are a, a dyed-in-the-wool fundamentalist Christian or, or fundamentalist Judeo-Christian Jew or Catholic or whatever you know, whatever Protestant following you might be a part of it, and however fundamentalist you are, all of those things to me were still capable of explaining or applying to just a universe. Um, not one without a God, but one that requires of us the same things, behaviors, morals, principles, that are presented to us by Christianity. I believe it wholeheartedly. And so, for myself, I'm really torn because I like our culture, our civilization, I like Christians, I like our communities, I like the way that we can all coexist and get along with one another. AJ, you sound like you're insane. Have you not turned on the news? You've heard me say that. Of course, I, I understand what we're shown on the news. It's what they choose to show us. I've said so many times, there are 320 plus million people in this country, and every day all of us have dozens and dozens of interactions with people of all backgrounds and faiths and both genders. Uh, all of the sexual preferences, black and white and Indian, and I work with a guy from Burundi, Africa, ladies and gentlemen. We all get along with one another. Most of the time, the vast majority of the time, we all get along with each other. Imagine that, 320 plus million people with dozens upon dozens of interactions each day with themselves and dozens and dozens and thousands of other people, hundreds, even if it's just 40, that's billions of peaceful coexistences, billions of peaceful interactions amongst we, the people. And so the, the news, including Fox News, name the channel, can show us, name the newspaper, can show us whatever they choose to show us each day, each week. They can wrap it up in pretty ribbons and amazing graphics and really attractive people reading it off of the teleprompter most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time, they're attractive. And in this HD world, ladies and gentlemen, they're attractive. And we are drawn to it. I am. I know all of us are. We turn it on. We're interested. We care about our lives. We care about what's happening in our societies, our towns, our cities, our, our states, our parishes, our counties. Because our family lives in them. Our, our People that we went to school with have moved to those places. We're acquainted with someone somehow. Six degrees of separation applies to all of us who vote who pay taxes, who are subject to the laws of the land, unlike our politicians, all of the above. We get it. That's why we'll go to NFL football games and take our hats off and stand and put our hands over our hearts. And thank God, even if you're an atheist or an agnostic or whatever, if you're a Satanist, grow up. Thank God those who came before us defended it and died for it the way that they did. Thank God as an agnostic, I'm saying it. Thank God that we have been capable, lucky enough to grow up in this kind of country where we can become those spoiled, uneducated, elitist little snobby brats that kneel during the national anthem while they're making millions, wearing a uniform, living an extravagant, luxurious life. It's just, we're tired of it. We, we know because we live it every day. We are not on the other side of the cameras. The people on the other side, the people in front of the cameras, the attractive people that read from the teleprompters and tell us what they want us to hear, they live in a completely different world than we do. They don't inhabit reality. Because in their worlds, they're more important to this world than you or me are, is. <laughs> they matter more because they're doing something more impactful, right? Oh, I don't think they are. I've seen sets built. I've been on the other side of the camera. It's no different than this reality, except for what you yourself allows yourself to make of it. That's something I've learned firsthand, and I will share with you now. There's nothing different about a Chuck Todd, a Don Lemon, a Chris Wallace, a, a Bill O'Reilly, um, what Bill Maher, Stephen Colbert, they're human beings that are just as subject to the frailties of life, the trivialities of life, and the, 
genetic downfall of humanity, just like the rest of us. They don't think so. They believe they have a different kind of connection, understanding, a depth to their ability to observe and understand and analyze and deduce. They don't. They simply have lighting, makeup, a staff, producers, cameras, directors, PR, assistants, all kinds of stuff. They do not live in the same world that we do. And I, I have been working very hard on conditioning myself to remember as I turn the television on to the news, and even other channels as well, sporting events, because commercials play, and the commercials are just as bad as the news. Advertising and advertisement, marketing in this country these days is just as bad as the mainstream media. There, I said it. <laughs> but you've got to remember, and I've been putting myself back into it, this is what they want me to see. I need to remember what I, have, I myself have seen around me for the past 15 years, traveling at the level that I did. I've been to every state except for Alaska and Hawaii. I've been to the Virgin Islands. I've been to Puerto Rico. You know, and, and what I saw was what I saw. People, America, civilization, the fabric of society. Billions of interactions amongst ourselves each day that, that cover the spectrum of evil to graceful, with actual grace, not the puffed up, fluffy, powdery word we use now for some female that has really good lighting and makeup and a staff. You know what I'm saying? We, we're out here, we're living it, and we're tired of being, well, we're tired of them trying to trick us and manipulate us. We know in some ways they've been successful because we find ourselves where we are. Remember what I said. Without, without an Obama, there would be no Trump. Remember when they said, without a Bush, there would be no Obama. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without an Obama, there would be no Trump. And it's because we allowed ourselves to get taken into the BS. We really do want change for America. We want the right change. We want to continue that perfection, that pursuit of perfection of this state of being, living, existing that we have here, where our constitution protects us from the government, not the other way around. I gotta take another break. Thanks for staying tuned. We'll be back. We're gonna have a book to shove in your skull. I have to figure out which one it is. I better work quickly. Uh, and more. There's always more. It's BS with AJ right here on the Talk America Radio Network. If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 800-378-2714. 800-378-2714. 800-378-2714. That's 800-378-2714. Welcome back to BS with AJ. Pleasure to be with you. A book to shove in your skull on the way very soon. You know, they say that when there's a big story or something that's really dominating the news, what is it that they're trying to keep us from knowing? What are they trying to hide? What are they trying to slip through without our noticing? Could it be the Tom Price stuff? Could it be the uh, abuse of office by a secretary in the administration? I guess it could be. I'm not trying to stoke a fire. I said at the top of the show, see ya. Wouldn't want to be you. Glad he's gone. I, I feel like he was a an establishment rhino Republican. I feel like he's the type of politician. You know, I'm not saying he's an evil person. I'm just saying he's the, he's the type of politician who... Where, where's he been on this whole debate? You know, I saw him do a couple interviews and some stuff the first time around with the attempt to repeal and replace. Other than that, all I've heard is that he did some dumb stuff flying around 
as he shouldn't have, spending money as he shouldn't have. What, what is, you know what I'm saying? If we're supposed to be repealing and replacing Obamacare, and in Obamacare, his position is given so, such immense, immense power, what was he doing with that power, aside from not flying correctly? <laughs> right? I, you know, uh, maybe there's a story there. I don't know. I told you guys back in, I believe it was November of last year, right after the election, I said, our intelligence community has become weaponized in the sense that since it's legal to wiretap, to surveil in all forms required, a foreign national without a warrant, the Obama administration and our intelligence community used that loophole to get all the information they wanted on whoever they wanted. That's why you see the unmaskings. Because they captured the intelligence that they needed. They knew how to capture the intelligence that they needed. We talked about this back in the day. Now we know it's true. I tell you what, if you, if you listen to BS with AJ, we're not just BSing. This is the real deal. We have been tricked into discussing the makeup on the pig about so many issues for so many years that finally we've all figured out all of the pigs that we're kissing and we're done talking about their makeup and a lot of us are burning our NFL gear and what was it something else we saw people burn recently I can't remember what it was but aside from uh, that's beside the point we're just we're getting tired of the BS we're getting tired of being sold BS in, in marketing and commercials and in the media and our politicians, our government, from the city level right on up. I tell you, you know, there's a real awakening. It's kind of, we've heard a lot ever since the Matrix movies came out, all about the red pill. Take the red pill, he's red pilled, I've been red pilled. I have been red pilled. I think a lot of you have been red pilled as well. When I say something to, to you along the lines of, every time you turn on the television, remember you're going to see what they want you to see, that's... Be part of being red pilled. There's nothing that comes across those airwaves, rarely maybe in live television, that isn't choreographed and scripted and part of the plan. It's very rare that anything you see anywhere except a sporting event or something else live where something unexpected happens. Every single thing that plays out on every single show except those live shows, game shows and sports, shows of competition, those are the only places where anything unexpected ever takes place. If you've ever seen Anchorman 2, it's, it's, it's such a... A lot of people would say a dumb movie, but I enjoyed that kind of humor and I laughed at it. But boy, there's an interesting subplot kind of undercurrent story going on there about how he figures out how to tell people what they want to hear. And in the movie, it ends up painting all of the viewers as stupid people who just want to watch a squirrel on water skis and so on and so forth. But the, the, the truth of the story is that there is a part of us, because we turn on our televisions to be entertained, that's what we want to see as entertainment. It's the news people who are taking themselves so seriously believing that they have a role to play in the common consideration and how, as a culture and society, we approach certain issues which present themselves to us for our engagement, right? We are working, we are living, we have our families, we, we're looking, we're thinking about tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, uh, college for the kids, braces, saving for, re whatever it is. No. The media's job is to provide us with what we need so that we can feel comfortable and secure in our... No. We turn on our televisions to be entertained. We want to know what's happening. We want to know what the stock market did. We want to know who committed some crimes. We want to know if something really bad or awful happened, probably. But we also want to know some positive things and some good things. But we don't want to be taught to hate one another. I don't believe that... I don't believe we want to be taught how to doubt and look over our shoulder at our neighbor or fellow citizen as we walk down our main street. I believe that's what liberals want of us. I believe that's what the media wants of us. I think they want us to be on alert at all times for danger and hate and triggering and division so that, well, indeed we are divided. We would be, wouldn't we? We are. Are we? Oh, it's so much fun. I don't know that we are, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I don't know that we are. I don't think that anything we're presented with on television, including Fox News, is accurate enough for us to take it at its face value. When we're seeing the new breaking special alert, the new poll, 
the new story from such and such and so and so about this, that, and the other thing, and mumbo jumbo. We have to stop and say, well, wait, what are they going to tell us tomorrow? How many times have we been given information on day one, hour one, that has, com that has been proven completely false? Hours later, days later, or when the final investigation takes place. Trayvon Martin, hands up, don't shoot in St. Louis, all of it, everything, earthquakes, nuclear tests, everything gets revised. Everything becomes more clear. Everything gets more deeply understood and looked in to a deeper level more exacting measurements taken. And so when we turn on the television each day, we can maybe detect, depending on what it is they're talking about, how deeply into the event and the story the, the, what's being presented is, whether or not it's going to be revised again in, in another hour. Oh, well, it wasn't quite this, it was that. It was not this, it was that. Well, this poll was weighted Democrats for that. And Well, the earthquake ended up only being 7.2 instead of 8.3. You know... I, I just, I guess the point I'm trying to make is sensationalism by our media, our entertainment industry, finds its way into every single moment, every single aspect of it. So even if it's a local two-bit robbery, we get the metaphor and hyperbole and rhetoric that t turns it into grand larceny and a threat to every member of the community, right? That's what we get. So the only answer for that, because they're not going to stop. It, Rush said it the other day as well. I keep referencing Rush, but it was a great interview with Hannity. He said he believes that the media is running the show and the Democrat Party is an arm of the media, the liberal media. I think he's absolutely right. I think our media, our entertainment industry, from music to Hollywood, all of it, they have an elitist agenda for you and me. You don't have to even go for the globalist agenda, agenda, even though I believe that exists as well. There are people who want there to be no borders and it to be a global situation. And boy, doesn't that sound utopian. Hmm, right? But they're out, the liberal media, they're out to control us because it would confirm for themselves the role they believe they already play. It would confirm their power. It would be like handing the scepter to the king. <laughs> it's the coronation. That's what it would be. When they can finally look us in the eye and control us to our faces and we follow suit, that's when they will be coronated. We're not there yet. That's why I say we, we've we recognized these pigs they're trying to sell us. The makeup has been washed away with liberal tears, if I may be so bold. I have for you this week a book. It's very short. It's 173 pages. It's by C.S. Lewis. I talked last segment about being a huge defender of Christianity, the Judeo-Christian faith, that evolved religion that is the only one, as big as it is, and that has had a civilization founded upon it, that allows its members and allows humanity in general, the supposed subjects of God, allows them to question God's existence and lead a life in denial of his existence. Without real life, in life, real time, punishment, in other words, those, AJ, what about the Inquisition? Well, that was hundreds of years ago. Oh, my gosh. Well, what about the Crusades? Oh, that was in response to invasions. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, sure, in the past, the churches did what they did, the Dark Ages, all that exists. This is the freaking 21st century. It's amazing to me how we can hear millennials and these so-called young intellectuals amongst us talk about all of this progressive thought that they've supposedly acquired from all of these genius professors that they've spent tens of thousands of their parents' money, dollars, to go to school for, talk about how something that took place hundreds of years ago, whether it's the Inquisition, the Crusades, slavery, whatever it might be, and behave as if, because it happened then, it must still be a problem now. I tell you what, it's just shocking. It's shocking to me, the lack of awareness the, the lack of a foundational ability of any liberal that I've ever met or that we see so loudly crying out in the world today to, to ha they, they can't exhibit a foundation of knowledge. They have no, there's no such thing as an educated guess from a liberal because they have no education. The only thing they've been given, all they've paid for, all they've earned in all of their schooling from high school on has been how to harness understand and use their emotions to affect change and manipulate the world outside of them for themselves to become the controllers of it. Gosh, AJ, are you sure? <laughs> yes. 
Yes, I am. Emotion is a very powerful tool, especially upon us sensitive Americans, because we are, because we live such luxurious, um, extravagant lives, most of us. Some of us work very hard, dirty jobs, some of us work dangerous jobs, all of the above. A lot of us, a lot of us work a lot of jobs, but we still, we do that to live these ex these just amazing lives, luxurious cheeses, aged cheeses and fruits from distant lands, grains grown across the globe, coffee that has passed through the digestive system of the Namubian goat. You know what I'm saying? That's America. That's what we're working for. That's what we strive for. And it's gorgeous. It's beautiful to sit down and talk about this wine that we're swishing around in our glasses or to drive the car or to wear the fabric. All of the, to have the device to engage with the media. We are so lucky, and it is a result of Christianity, says this agnostic. This week's book to shove in your skull is by C.S. Lewis, one of the great Christian apologists. The Screw Tape Letters, 173 pages. I've read it twice. It, you can't not read it more than once, and you should read it often throughout your life. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's a book about a demon or a devil in the bureaucracy of hell, Satan's bureaucracy, writing letters to his newly employed and hardworking nephew, I think, if I remember correctly, I need to read it again, who's just begun his work as a devil to try to steal the human souls. This is phenomenal. This is a behind-the-scenes look at how to strategize, how to twist and turn and, and malform and mistreat human souls. And what you end up with is pictures and views into everyday life here on Earth in America. It's just absolutely a wonderful read. Um, it makes some arguments and, well, it just cuts through. It's, like I say, it's 173 pages. Brevity is the soul of wit, as I said earlier in the show. 172 pages. I was wrong by one. My edition is from, like, the 70s. There's a really neat forward in there. And 61, I'm sorry, it's from the 60s. you got to read it. The Screw Tape Letters, from one demon to another. One veteran up in the bureaucracy demon to the young upstart hopeful demon on how to twist and win for Satan the souls of man. Absolutely fascinating. The Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. Another phenomenal show. Remember, I had the last word on the NFL. It's not about Colin Kaepernick. It's not about the players. It's not even about the teams. It's about the fact that they get to stand on the field at all. It's about, about the fact that we all can come together. That's the whole thing. They want to talk about unity. It's not about them. Sunday, the NFL is about community. It's about the collective. We come together to root for our team in a harmless manner, in rivalry with one another, harmlessly. It's not about you, Colin. Shave the fro. Wake up. Take the red pill, bruh. It's not about you. It's about us. It's about America. It's about what is here. It's not about you, bruh. Everybody have a blast. Thanks for tuning in to BS with AJ. We'll be back next week with more. Can't wait to hear what... Uh, what we'll be talking about then, depending on uh, Trump's speeches and other media exclamations and hysterics. It's going to be a blast. Stay safe, and until next time, bye, Earth.